And here we are again at Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Notes. They had wished, actually, to die in the wilderness, and in the wilderness they would die. Verse four, uh, chapter 14, verse 2. Just go right ahead and look right at it. God honors faith, even if it's in the opposite direction. <laughs> verse 29. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against thee. Notes. Now, this actually included all of those uh, who had been enrolled as soldiers of the Lord, but had refused and had incurred the guilt of basically mutiny. Uh, this, uh, this offense is actually punishable by death if you read chapters 1 and 2. Verse 30. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you where, uh, dwell wherein. Save Caleb, uh, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. As stated, God actually honored the faith of these two men. Verse 31. But your little ones which you said should be a prey to the enemy, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. Notes. By the word pray, I have actually put the words to the enemy. Now, how so much this would be a lesson to all modern believers. God cannot, he cannot abide in doubt and unbelief. As a matter of fact, he will actually work against you as is obvious. Verse 32. But as for you, said with contempt, by the way, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. Notes. Basically, until this generation dies off, the younger ones could not go into the promised land. Verse 34. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquity, even forty years and you shall know my breach of promise. Notes. They were to know and understand that the quality and quantity of their punishment was entirely due to themselves, and it needed no other justification. If God assigns reasons at all, He assigns such as can be understood by those to whom He speaks. In other words, this is a very just punishment, and I definitely see that. Verse 35. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Notes. What a sad uh, proclamation from the Lord. Now, well, faithful, faithfulness is always for God, and faithlessness is always against God. Verse 36. And the man which Moses sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men who did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague of the Lord. Notes. When we slander God's gift, we slander God. Whether God places the believer, even in a wilderness, the believer must thank the Lord constantly and never allow a word of doubt to come out of his mouth. And it seems that they all died at one time, or very, very close to the same time. By what method, we really are not actually told, but apparently it was visible to the entire congregation. Verse 38. But Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephaniah, which were of the men who went to search the land, lived still. No, it's another... In one way or the other, the plague continues to operate. It is only faith which spares mankind, and we might quickly add faith in Christ and what Christ did at the cross. You can read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. Verse 39. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Notes. They had plenty of good reasons to mourn, but it was not a mourning of repentance. 
Well, it's pretty obvious because it did not lead them to true repentance. And if they would have done that, God probably, most likely, would have given them another chance. As a matter of fact, sometimes God threatens us with the punishments to actually try and invoke some kind of repentance out of us. But if He tried to force it on us, that would violate our free will, basically, and God will not do that. Verse 40. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up onto the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. Notes. As we will yet see, there was not a there was not a shred of true repentance, but merely consisted of a frantic effort to avoid the punishment which their sins had actually incurred. Verse 41, And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Notes, concerning this, William says, Verses 39-45 through 45 illustrate the presumption of the natural heart just as the closing verses of chapter 13 illustrate the cowardice. The carnal mind cannot serve God. It is timid when it should be bold and bold when it should be timid. It advances when it should stand still and it stands still when it should advance. Verse 42. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword. Because you turned away from the Lord, therefore the Lord will not be with you. Notes. Everybody should circle that verse right there. Verse 44. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Notes. Once again, they're operating on presumption. This attitude shows that their repentance was not true. They were still disobeying the Lord. I mean, come on. Do not go this way. Well, we'll just go right ahead and do it anyways. Verse 45. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt in the land in that hill, and smote them, and discomforted them, even unto Hormah. Notes. God with them, they could not be defeated, Without the Lord, they had already been defeated. Chapter 15. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you become into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or in a free will offering, or in your solemn feast to make a sweet savor unto the Lord of the herd of the flock, then shall he who offers his offering unto the Lord bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hen of oil. Verse 5. And the fourth part of an hen of wine for a drink offering shall you prepare with the burnt offering of sacrifice for one lamb. Note, the drink offering portrayed the life of Christ which would be poured out. Verse 6. Or for a ram you shall prepare for a meat offering two tenth deals of flour mingled with the third part of an hen of oil. And for a drink offering you shall offer the third part of an hen of wine for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And when you prepare a bullock for a burnt offering or for a sacrifice in performing a vow or peace offerings unto the Lord, then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenth deals of flour mingled with half an hen of oil. Notes, let us all be reminded that these meat offerings actually had no flesh, but were altogether grain, made into loaves of bread, and we will have to pick up in chapter 15, verse 10 of the book of Numbers. <laughs> 